Kaleidoscope, a weekly public affairs program brought to you in partnership with the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, Kaleidoscope Magazine, and News Channel 5. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the broadcast today. The U.S. Army is sponsoring an educational initiative to raise awareness about one aspect of the county's military history, the country's military history. Lieutenant Colonel Patrick Powers is Cleveland commander of the U.S. Army Recruiting Battalion, and he'll talk more about this initiative. Later on today, we will hear from the dean of Kent State University, Twinsburg Regional Academic Center, David Moen, and the mayor of Twinsburg, Kathy Prokop. They're going to talk about a program that they've got going together. And later in the broadcast still, we will hear from the manager of volunteer services at the Cleveland Metro Parks Zoo, Lynn Charles, and volunteer Ingrid Rinker. It's going to be a great broadcast. This, I promise. Good morning again. This is Kaleidoscope. I'm Leon Bibb, and so we begin. Beginning with one of the good guys here, Lieutenant Colonel Patrick, Patrick Powers of uh, the U.S. Army Recruiting Battalion here in Cleveland. Good to see you, Colonel. Thanks for having me on. Things are well in the U.S. Army, I'll bet. Things are well, sir. Yes. Oh, good, to, good to have you. Good to have you on the broadcast. You're going. You're here really talking about a project that, that's dear to your heart, called For Love of Liberty. Whoa, yes, for sir. the love of liberty. What is that? Uh, for the love of liberty is a program that the United States Army put together that showcases and highlights the service and patriotism of the African American soldier. Mm -hmm. And it starts with Crispus Atticus in mm -hmm. the Boston Massacre, mm -hmm. and Chronicle. Uh, just it, it, it tells the story with some first-person and second-person accounts, mm -hmm. some very famous uh, uh, mm -hmm. actors that, yeah. that narrate this, and it's a dynamite program. It, it will definitely leave your eyes uh, watered. It shows the black soldier all the way from the very beginning of the country. And the amazing sacrifices and, and patriotism, despite what was going on at home, mm -hmm. you know, I think as we talked yeah. earlier, mm -hmm. generation after generation of soldiers stepping up and serving their country, even though their country may not have given back to them at the time. What initiated this project? Well, the Army is a, a cross-section of America, and we like to have a representation of all groups of, of mm -hmm. Americans. And so um, we're trying to reach out to the African-American community because in Cleveland, for example, we don't necessarily have the same number of African-American young men and women mm -hmm. interested in, in serving yeah. as you do uh, other uh, groups of folks. So trying to reach out to some of the community and really trying to promote this story because we've got some great veterans like yourself, mm -hmm. like Mayor Jackson and others, yeah. who really accredit a lot of their success to their time in the Army. There's no doubt about it. The Army helped mold me, really, when I was a youngster coming out. You brought a piece of tape with you, which we're going to roll a little piece of tape, and it's from this, uh, from this uh, uh, DVD, For Love of Liberty, the story of black Americans in the, in the U.S. military, and we're going to roll a piece of that tape right now. We'll roll that and we'll chat on the end of that piece of tape. As the thousands of black fighting men debarked from the crowded troop ships, they presented an impressive and awe-inspiring spectacle. Armed with basic weapons and full-field battle dress, proudly wearing the circular shoulder patch with the black buffalo, they moved smartly and efficiently into their unit formations. As they marched away, every man in step, every weapon in place, chins up and eyes forward, a low rumbling babble of sound came from the troops on the dock, then swelled to a crescendo of thunderous cheering, which continued until the last Buffalo unit had disappeared from sight. Ulysses Lee. Ah, that's a great piece of tape, great piece of tape. And it's from this DVD, For Love of Liberty, the story of America's black patriots. Really a, a great thing. Uh, uh, you've, you're, you're just chock-filled with, with some of the history uh, uh, of these black soldiers who, sure. who, who went off the battle. Those, those pictures from World War II we just saw. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. one, one of the things that we're doing is we have this CD in uh, all my recruiting stations. We have 24 stations across northern Ohio and western Pennsylvania. And uh, we're trying to promote this in the schools to, to help educators inform their students about you know the, the real history of our of our soldiers especially our african-american soldiers where can people see this picture with see this see this dvd the, the, this documentary they can contact our local army recruiter and he'd be happy to deliver it or teach the class or just give it to an educator to you, you, so, so teachers can use this in the, class, in, 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 in the classroom. Sure. Uh, it's really vital. I'm wearing a little pin, which which uh, which uh, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Patrick Powers gave me. It says I'm a veteran of the U.S. Army, and I wear that right below uh, my uh, bronze star. 
That means I've got, I, have the, I was awarded the Bronze Star Medal right there, and that, that one on the top, I wear that every, ba- every day. People ask me all the time, what's that little medal you wear? That's just one of the things you and I have in common yeah, right there. One of the things we have in common. <laughs> yes, sir. Good to, good to have you here talking about it. You've got something else going on, too, our Community Salutes program. What, what is that? Yes, sir. Our Community Salutes is a, is a program. There's a, uh, a group of folks that are volunteering to put this together, mm-hmm. um, and the intent is to celebrate the service and patriotism of all the seniors from senior class 11 Mm -hmm. that are going to enlist in any branch, National Guard, uh, Coast Guard, Marine Corps, Navy, Army, Reserves. And we're going to invite about 500 of these young men and women from the greater Cleveland area with their parents. And uh, the committee says they're going to host it right here on 12 May at the Masonic uh, Auditorium down the street here. Mm -hmm. On around East 40th Street in Euclid Avenue. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And uh, the intent is to connect these new next generation of soldiers, sailors, and airmen with their families, with the veterans, and, and for the community to put their arms around them and say, you know, we celebrate your service. Uh, to raise your hand and, and volunteer in a time of crisis is an amazing thing. You have a lot of these kinds of programs where you're trying to get students educated about the, the, the careers that they can find in the military. Yes, sir. Like Cleveland, you know, we got kind of beat up last year with that whole um, city rating yeah. scheme. Uh-huh. Um, the Army kind of takes a bad rap, too, and, and you can remember the days of yeah. go to war, go mm-hmm. to jail. Mm-hmm. That's absolutely not the case yeah. with the military, and yeah. so today's young men and women are, are just amazing, and we're trying to highlight that and connect with folks. I'm going to put a phone number on the screen, uh, 216-802-1400. You can find more information on everything we can talk about, and people can contact you through that phone number, right, to, to, to get the DVD for Love of Liberty, the story of America's black patriots, and they can, maybe you can use that in class, or sure. somebody can come to the class and, and talk. And they can also go to goarmy.com. Yeah. yeah. I brought something with me. I'm not pushing my, me, but I'm just kind of showing you what the military can do for you. That's me in a place called Pleiku, South Vietnam, a long time ago in the middle of a war, carrying an M. 16 weapon doing what we had to do during the war. So uh, I thank the Army for what the Army has been able to do for me. It certainly helped uh, help me with my with my uh, my career, certainly helped me with, with growing up and discipline and all those kinds of things. And we thank you for your service. Leave us with a thought, Colonel Powers. Leave us with a thought on why this is vital. I'll take about 20 seconds or so. As far as, as recruiting goes, you've seen the numbers. We're doing very well. What I would ask people to do is is if there's a young man or woman like yourself or me that has sort of a, procl- a proclivity to serve, just support their decision to serve. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't get in their way. Mm-hmm. It's not for everybody, and we won't take everybody. Only 3 out of 10 are qualified. But those that are interested, show them your support. 802-1400 in the 216 area code, or you can go to GoArmy.com. Sure. Get more information on the entire thing that we've been talking about. Colonel Powers, good to see you. Pleasure. Thank you, Good sir. to see you, my friend. Good to, have, good to have the Army in the house. A good, a good bunch of guys. Log on to Newsnet5.com each week to see what's coming up on Kaleidoscope. We will continue our broadcast here from Kent State University's new Regional Academic Center program. All of that in just a moment. Welcome back to more of Kaleidoscope today. Dean of Kent State University Twinsburg Regional Academic Center, David Moen, and the Twinsburg Mayor, Kathy Prokop, Prokop are here to talk about the new academic center that will be built in Twinsburg. Good to have you with us. Thank you. Mayor Prokop, good to have you with us from the city of Twinsburg. Tell me about this relationship between Twinsburg, your community, and Kent State University. Well, this center has been a true collaborative effort between the university and the city of Twinsburg. We have been partners for more than a dozen years. Uh, Originally, Kent State Academic Center was located in a city-owned building. It still is till the new center is built. And we have had uh, the same goals and visions for many years. And this is finally the fruition of those goals and visions. What's going to happen and what happens at this academic center, Dean? Well, as the mayor noted... We have a common vision, and part of that vision is to help drive the economic future of not just Twinsburg, but the region. Mm -hmm. And we hope to be able to do that by providing associate degrees, baccalaureate degrees, and at this new facility, master's degrees. Mm -hmm. You find during tough economic times, and we're in a kind of a tough economic time right now, People started saying, "I gotta get some more training. Yes. I gotta get educated," and yes. so they come. They come. They come to your, your 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 campus there. And a good example of that is five years ago, we had oh, approximately 200 students, and Leon today were nearly 800. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a big part of it is what you just said. Where are you located there? Well, currently we're at the square in downtown Twinsburg Mm -hmm. in what is called 
the old school. Mm -hmm. However, come fall of 012, we'll be in a brand new facility. Yeah. And that's what we're talking about. Mayor, how does this help Twinsburg now, this, this relationship? Well, it has been a long-time uh, goal for the city of Twinsburg to move into the health and education sectors. And... Um, with the Cleveland Clinic, University Hospitals, that sector is really growing and now the education piece fits together. Kent State Academic Regional Center will be offering nursing courses. Um, I believe that we'll have great cooperation between both the health and education areas in the city. Um, you know, now education is so much more accessible through the internet. We need to make it more accessible and affordable in our communities. This is a great regional project. The dean has been the driver of this project, and it's going to be a tremendous outreach in our yeah. communities, bringing in adults for retraining, re-education, and first-time students. Now, this helps your community economically speaking. Now. It does. I mean, this gives you. This is a shot in the arm for Twinsburg, isn't it? It really is. It's a uh, very welcome shot in the arm because we will see ancillary businesses. Uh, both from the health field and also uh, from Kent State University. That will be a shot in the arm for our local businesses, for the commercial areas. It truly is a uh, very beneficial thing for the city economically. Twinsburg opened up their arms to you. Absolutely. And that, made all, that, that, made all, that makes all the difference in the world? Well, when you think about partnering, mm -hmm. you want somebody that has a shared vision, a shared passion, and they work with you every day, and Kathy Prokop does that with Kent State. Until you finish this new Twinsburg Academic Center, as you said, to be completed in, in 2012, what kind of courses can, can, uh, are you really highlighting uh, where you're meeting right now in the old school in Twinsburg? Well, we run the gamut from what is called PSEO, post-secondary option, where young men and women who are still in high school can take courses with us. And you can take courses clear through a baccalaureate degree. And we partner well with Tri-C. Mm -hmm. we, we receive a number of their students in Twinsburg. There's a phone number that I'm going to put on the screen as we continue our discussion here with these two great people. 330-487-0574, as you see at the bottom of the screen. Or you can go to geauga.kent.edu. You can get more information on everything, on everything that we're talking about. Mayor, cities have to reinvent themselves. Some of them. I mean, you You've been hit hard with the closing of the Chrysler plant there. We've all covered the stories on, on, on the television station about that. This is a way to reinvent yourself and look deeper into the 21st century, isn't it? That is a very good way to put it. It truly is. We have over 400 businesses in the city, but we need to help them grow and providing educational opportunities for their employees and for our young people in the community is a way to help reinvent and reinvigorate our community. Uh -huh. So this is vital to what we're talking about. We're actually saving, not only saving Kent State University, not only saving Twinsburg or giving each other a shot in the arm, but saving ourselves, the state of Ohio and the United States of America, right? Absolutely. I've said it well. <laughs> yes, you have. Okay. okay. Once again, the telephone number is 330-487-0574. You can get more information on everything we've been talking about. We've been talking to the Honorable Kathy Prokop, who's the mayor of the city of Twinsburg, and Dean David Moen, who's Kent State University's Twinsburg Regional Academic Center leader. Good to have you both on the campus. Thank you. Tell everybody at Kent we said hey. Will do. Tell everybody in Twinsburg we said hey. We will. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm going to take a break. We'll return after this. We've got some surprises from the zoo. You will love this coming up. Welcome back to more of Kaleidoscope today. The Cleveland Metro Park Zoo is looking for volunteers, and the manager of volunteer services, Lynn Charles, is here with zoo volunteer herself, Ingrid Rinker, and they're here to talk about the zoo and share information on how you can volunteer at the zoo and get a chance to do little things like this, I suppose. Absolutely. Good to have you here. Tell <laughs> Thank me, you. Tell me about yeah. the, as, as we've got a corn snake, and we're going to get to the corn snake in just a moment. Yes, tell yes. me. Tell me about this volunteer program oh, at the zoo. it's a great program. The program is as old as 1972 mm -hmm. and uh, it's a great opportunity for uh, folks to come out in uh, March of this year. In fact, we have yeah. two dates for what we call mm -hmm. our volunteer safari. Mm -hmm. That's an orientation where if you want to learn more about the zoo, how you can be a volunteer and what yeah. it takes and what we ask of you, if you come out to our safari and our dates are March 2nd uh -huh. and also on March 5th. Yeah. So we have a Wednesday and a Saturday. Select one of those dates. Come out from 930 till 230 and you get to tour the zoo 
zoo, of course. We give you a full tour of the zoo and the rainforest. You meet other volunteers. Mm -hmm. You get to meet some staff also. And you'll see a little demonstration of some of our most exciting animals. These are our education animals. Yeah, and so we got, we've got Ingrid Rinker here. You're one of the volunteers yeah. here. Now, now, now tell me, what is that you're, you're holding before you get to why you volunteered? She's a corn snake. A corn snake. Mm -hmm. That means that and it's a female. It's, she's not a that female. I can tell females. I, <laughs> not that I can tell the difference either. Why did, you, why did you become a volunteer at the zoo? I wanted to volunteer somewhere and have something to do with animals, uh -huh. and I didn't want to volunteer for with animals that I was going to take home with uh -huh. me. Uh -huh. not so the zoo is a good place. So not everybody at the volunteer has to work with the animals. Oh, you absolutely don't have, you can do all not. Kinds yes, of things at we the have zoo. wonderful opportunities. Mm -hmm. We have volunteers who are greeters. Some work our information yeah. booths. Mm -hmm. All of them work special yeah. events that we have throughout the season, of course. And mm -hmm. we have uh, tram controllers. They yeah. actually are ride the tram and help to uh, direct and uh, give information about uh, the, the zoo as visitors mm -hmm. are there. And uh, so, and the special events uh, that you can work are, are great also. And uh, so. It's anything that you think you might want to do, mm -hmm. there is an opportunity yeah. for a volunteer to do it there at our zoo. Ingrid, before you put that snake away and bring out another friend, let me touch this snake here. Oh, it feels wonderful. Oh, yeah. like now you're going to have to wash that I'm going to wash it. Well, I'm going to wash my hands. You can do it. But it's a wonderful feel. What else yeah. did you bring with us, Ingrid? Why, you, you get, get something else out of your, mm -hmm. okay. your amazing She's... box. <laughs> exactly. And you're, yeah. you're going to tell us about do any people need particular skills to be volunteers? You just have to want to have fun. We mm -hmm. tell people it's the most meaningful fun you'll ever have. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is to want to have fun, want to, uh, to commit to at least 40 mm -hmm. hours a year. Yeah. And uh, and that's the most that we ask of you, 40 hours a year. Mm -hmm. We will train you uh, once you join the uh, volunteer staff to do your job. Yeah. And if animals are what you'd like to do, you get trained to handle the animals mm -hmm. also. Well, if animals are not what you want to do, then you come in as uh, other uh, particular jobs that we have. What have you brought with you this time, Ingrid? He is, uh, Barkley is a bearded dragon. Barkley the bearded dragon? Yep. And he's called a bearded dragon because when he's frightened, he puffs out all this skin underneath uh -huh. here, puffs it out, it turns very dark, and it makes him look ferocious. He's got this big, prickly-looking black beard. Well, we'll and that's we his will, defense. We will not frighten Barkley. We will keep <laughs> Barkley cool and calm. That's yeah. right. Absolutely. That's, good. that's great. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about all of this now? now? Oh, I think it's the most one of the most exciting jobs I've ever had. Mm -hmm. And it's because you meet the volunteers are the most giving and committed group of people that you mm -hmm. ever work with. Mm -hmm. And again, it's all donated time. Yeah. And um, they always say that um, next week they're going to come back because they know they're going yeah. to get a raise. Going to get a lot. Going to get a lot. Yeah, going to raise. Yeah, it's <laughs> double what they made. Double this, what yeah, they made. Yeah, that's that's, that's right, why they're exactly. volunteering. Uh, they're, Ingrid's going to get us another round. You bring something else. Yeah, keep going. Keep okay, going. Okay, but uh, they always say that, it, it, and I love them because they are so committed, and they do have a good time. And um, it's a great way of meeting other people. Uh, we take the volunteers from 18 and up. As yeah. long as you are an adult and 18 mm -hmm. years old, we're happy to have you in as a volunteer. And um, as I said, and it's an opportunity to learn more and, and learn a lot about what the mission is yeah. at the zoo. You uh -huh. know, our mission is actually improving uh, the future for wildlife. And we look at the... Um, issues of conservation and education for visitors. Let's put a phone number on the screen, 661-6500, extension 4494. You can get more information in the area uh, 216. Or you can go to Klee Met Zoo, C-L-E-M-E-T-Z-O-O dot -O com. Klee Met Zoo, we'll put that on the screen. Yes. And what do we have here? This is Rose. She's a hedgehog yeah. from Africa. Hey. And she is full grown. In the porcupine uh, area? She, nope. She's not real related real to porcupines. Real soft. Mm -hmm. Real soft. That's because she's relaxed and not frightened. If uh -huh. she was frightened, she'd tighten up her skin and all those quills would stick up straight and she'd be kind of prickly. Why do you, That's why I'm wearing gloves. Why do you like volunteering, uh, Ingrid Rinker? I've never had so much fun in my life. Mm -hmm. I get to take animals out. One thing Lynn didn't mention that we get to do is take animals out and do programs in daycare yeah. centers, elementary schools, uh -huh. nursing homes, mm -hmm. take the zoo to people who can't go to the zoo. Yeah. And that is so much fun. Uh -huh. It's wonderful, wonderful. And you should turn around so everybody can see your pretty face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, we get a shot. Let's turn around. Uh -huh. Maybe we can get, the, where, where are we on? We're on camera three? Yeah, back over there in the corner. Right, yeah. camera three. Uh -huh. Take a look at camera number yeah. three. What, what's this hedgehog's name? 
Her name is Rose. Rose. Rose we have three hedgehog. three hedgehogs, uh -huh. and they all have prickly yeah. names: Rose, Thistle, and Holly. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much, Lynn Charles, manager of volunteer services, and Ingrid Rinker, who's a volunteer both at the Cleveland Metro Parks Zoo. We appreciate you being with us. Uh, thank you for having 661, us. Six six one sixty five hundred extension forty four ninety four. You can get more information on on all we've been talking about thank volunteering, you. and thank the animals for coming too. Absolutely. They were well behaved. <laughs> Take a break for back in a moment. Okay. There you go. We're back with Marsha Mockaby, the interim president of the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, who always has wise commentary. <laughs> Thank you, Leon. Boy, that puts the pressure yeah. on. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I'm glad to be here as always. And today, I want to announce something very special that's happening at the Urban League for Black History Month. Uh -huh. We are partnering with Verizon Wireless for a program called Everyday Heroes. You know, during Black History Month, we always um, just absolutely celebrate uh, our great heroes and sheroes uh, in black history yeah. and what Verizon has done in partnering with us is ask us to take a look at just the everyday people who are making great contributions in our community and give them a chance to be recognized the tagline says a true hero needs no thanks but they definitely deserve it yeah. so we want to nominate and celebrate those everyday heroes in our community what do you think is the thought well what is the thought behind all of this what's the driving wheel I I think that many of us, if all of us look back, we probably have a mentor or someone in our lives who really made a significant contribution to our lives and made a difference. Sometimes we get a chance to thank them and sometimes we don't. Life is short. Mm -hmm. So I think the thought here is let's give these folks their flowers while they can smell them yeah. and let's say thank you to them while we can. When are we going to do this? We're going to do this starting today on the broadcast today mm -hmm. the 13th uh -huh. and you can go to Verizon everydayheroes.com yeah. or you can come to the Urban League and pick up a nomination form submit your nomination and we're going to have a big celebration in March mm -hmm. of the uh, folks who are going to be chosen to be uh, recognized. In about 15 seconds there are everyday heroes all around Absolutely. the place. Right? In our churches, in our schools, in our communities. The only people we can't nominate are people that work at the Urban League or people that work at Verizon. I was going to nominate you, but <laughs> I guess I'll have to nominate somebody Bless else. Your heart. Okay. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you, Marsha Mockaby. Thank you. Interim President of the Urban League of Greater Cleveland. That's going to do it for Kaleidoscope. I'm Leon Diff. Be well. Kaleidoscope, a weekly public affairs program brought to you in partnership with the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, Kaleidoscope Magazine, and News Channel 5.